Welcome to episode 36 of Breaking Hearts. Kama kawaida sio boy Hafare aka Rodney Malik Casino aka Mr Metronome aka your girlfriend's boyfriend. Na leo niko na Maina. Maina. Eric. Yes. Uh, I also go by Rice to those who know me a long time ago. I also go by Haitas Karaoke, but my lovers call me often. Yeah. Hey, hey, yeah. Yeah. Hey, yeah. Hey. They do. As in me see. They do. Kwanza love hers. Yes, yes, plural. The emphasis on plural, plural so man, plural. This is a man who has like a boudoir, I imagine. Usichome form kubwa. Hey, take it. Nilichomanga kitambo. Size in sports strength tactics. True. Tunaribu kila mahali. Gorilla warfare. Exactly. I love it. <laughs> Unfortunately, Suki is not feeling well today. She at, at the time of recording she is not available. We pray she gets better and by the time you listen to this she should be back on her feet. So next week Tukone and a special guest uh to talk about some special things. Ooh. Yeah, so tukwapo. But anyway, this has been a very hectic week for me. A lot of things have been happening at the same time, so I didn't get the time to get through as much music I would want, so it was just playlists. But I did manage to get through one project, Magic 2 by Nas. And Nas late career renaissance is something amazing. Like Nas was just, he was, you know, he was there. Unajua? Mm-hmm. Like, you, you, you could still go back to the Illmatic, Stillmatic. Mm, it was oh, written. Yeah, it was written. All those, all those are great albums. And yeah, then you, yeah. I think the last good Nas album that I really enjoyed, like before he became like this version of himself was Life is Good in like 2012. I don't think I listened to that. Actually. Yeah, it had like Accident Murderers and... The song about his daughter accident murderers like manslaughter <laughs> yeah like a song about accident murderers uh, with uh, the cross the, the uh, song about his daughter uh, and then like growing up not understanding how to be a father how he wasn't a good husband and then even like on the cover like i'm i'm actually wearing dress ya nani ya kelis ooh crazy but anyway ooh. his his like renaissance since he met hit boy has been amazing because there's been king disease one, two, three. And then now there's magic one and magic two, and all of them are bangers like he's he's rapping at an elite level I remember Nicky watch documentary uh Wu-Tang Clan. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Like he described Nas like somehow it's like we all knew he could rap mm-hmm. all of us. But like when Nas came around you, you knew you couldn't mm-hmm. rap. It was like like when he was born the rap gods shone a light on him like the Messiah like oh, <laughs> this is the chosen like, like one. The, like the Mr. Bean intro. Hey, yes. <laughs> like the Mr. Bean intro like this is the chosen one. Knew you. Knew you. So yeah, mm-hmm. Nas has been an amazing rapper for a very long time and I feel like he's getting to that point in his career where he's like let me prove it to you niggas. Yeah. Again. Again, what do you think did 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 his style change? Was it um the presence of a new producer? Yes, I feel like the artistic direction that Hit Boy is giving him uh, and giving him beats that are, uh, Nas has the worst beat selection for somebody that good. Ah, uh, that's true actually. Nas has like can't lie, can't lie. I tell you if Nas mm. had recross beat selection mm. untouchable. I mean just to do come a jekol. That man can rap. I don't think I'm produced like that. But yeah, but it's a very good project, very right, solid, right, right. very compact. Has 50 Cent on there who is one of my favorite rappers. Like Prime 50 is the best version of any rap I've ever seen. That's true. That's like true. Prime actually. 50 Cent yeah, is the yeah, best yeah. version of any rapper I have ever seen. When like 50 was to on, a 3 to a 350. Mm. Like if you were to choose rapper picks, I will always choose that one. Mm. 50 had hey like more people knew 50 Cent than new Jesus mm. in 2003. Mm. It's giving a Beatles. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> You're like Elvis Presley. 50 yes. was bigger than anything in yes, 2003. Yes, yes. And he still is like and I love his career renaissance. So squeezy when you get a 50 cent verse you're like, "Hmm, I appreciate this." Yeah. I appreciate. And it's he's not those mm. he's not those rappers who get old and act all snooty and uppity like mm. they start doing artistic shit. Yeah. Now that nigga yeah. just wants to make movies and rap once in yeah. a while and I love it. I get that. Actually, so, yeah. same way for Nas, right? Nas doesn't even make movies. Nas just raps. Mm. He just he's one of those people who I, I feel like Nas's entire career is based around the fact that I am I am better than you. Mm. I am always mm. I will always be a better rapper than you. The confidence yes. he exudes. And I got to prove that Mimi, yeah. Mimi, Mimi, Mimi Nas, yeah. I'm better than you at this rap thing. You could yeah. be better at many other things, yeah. but not this one I'm that nigga. thing. I'm that nigga. Yeah, so that was my mm. only listen this week. So take it away. All right. So I've been listening to a few things of late. Uh, mm-hmm. I've not had the privilege of being here before, so it might be uh, a bit extensive. But my first pick is My Soft Machine by Arlo Parks. If you've not listened to Arlo Parks, please remedy that because because that woman goes crazy and this album is phenomenal. It's indie, a bit of soul, a bit of R&B. Um she she pours her heart out in it and you feel it. You feel it, you know? 
Like, it's hard to give an album a chance. And uh, sitting down and listening to one is hard for many people. I love it, but it's hard for many people. But yeah. for this album, it really hits. And she has this cover of um, Mystery of Love by Safian, yeah, Safian Stevens. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's how you pronounce mm-hmm. yeah. it. Yeah. The guy who did the soundtrack for Call Me By Your Name. And it's beautiful. It's beautiful. It's one of those songs that makes you weep. And you don't know why you're weeping, but you weep. So I definitely recommend did that. Did you weep? I did weep. I cry all the time, man. I'm, I'm, I'm a nigger, but I'm not that nigger. You yeah, know? Like you, you're not a stoic man. You're not Hank Hill. No, no, man. No, man. <laughs> Do I, you think Hank Hill ever cried in his life? He did in the show once. I and think his dad made him cry. No, no, I think it was his dog. It was when, his when dog. dog. When his dog was dying. Oh, yeah. And then he realized the dog yeah, is getting old. Yeah, I relate with Peggy, man. Yeah. Because, hey, that man loved his dog more than he loved his wife. <laughs> his, wife his wife was a narcissist. Uh, I understand. Let's not get into it. <laughs> let's not get into it. Let's not get into it. Okay, so, what's next? Uh, my next album is, I'm going to butcher this name, so I apologize, is uh, Uthingo Le Nkosazana by Nkosazana Daughter. It's on my piano and... When our piano begin, began to hit, I, I had my feelings about it. I was like, oh, you know, it's a new thing. It's a phase. It's going to pass away. Until I listened to it properly. And that shit slaps. I'm telling you, it slaps. The melodies. You know when a song is seven minutes and you want to listen to the whole seven minutes? How crazy is that? And it's an album full of seven-minute songs. <laughs> and I think the playlist is what? It's um, 10 songs long. It's a journey, but it's a journey that is worth traveling and I highly recommend that. Even though you don't like a piano, go for it, man. Go for it. Life is short. What are you going to listen to when you're dead? Beethoven, Mozart, <laughs> you know? Your options are limited, so do it now while you can. And mm-hmm. the next album I recommend is uh, Americana by DJ Lucas. I know, Afari, you don't like White Boy Rap. Do you? Oh, no, I like White Boy Rap. Like, I like Jack Harlow. Yeah. Like, I feel like I hate White Boy Rap when it's, it's like a, a parody. Yeah. Of what rap is, because a lot of white boys are like, oh, I listen to that real hip hop yeah, shit. Yeah, like Lil Dicky or something yeah. like that. No, mm. no, Lil Dicky is self aware, so he mm. makes fun of himself. Okay, he's parodying. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. like, I really hate that, the whole, like, oh, I'm a white boy, but yeah. I listen to Nas and yeah. Nimbo. Shut the fuck yeah. up, man. Maybe just want to listen to Gucci yeah. Mane. Yeah. <laughs> like, if you're a white boy, be a white boy like Nani, like Paul Wall. Yeah. Just do what own you need. Yeah, just own it. Just do what you like. Nobody cares. If, if you're from the hood, make trap music. Yeah. You don't have to be a lyrical cl- criminal individual in your swimming pool type rapper. And this and artist hit, is, uh-huh. is making trap and a lot of it is not about being white. You mm. know when he does it, when, when, uh, when these white rappers come and they're like, oh, you know, I'm white and it sucks because I'm a rapper. It kind of like turns you off because mm-hmm. you're like, bro, like you're privileged. <laughs> we don't get it. But DJ Lucas on this album, Americana. Worth it, worth it. Is he, it. Is he, is he actually lines. a DJ? Or is he like DJ Qualls? Or DJ is just your first it's name? It's just his name. It's okay, like Ken good. the Man. She's not really a man, is she? Because <laughs> you know, I really hate DJ something. Because yeah. are you a DJ or are you not? So you know DJ Qualls? No. The, the actor? Mm-mm. So I, I've always wondered, is he an actual DJ? Come back to Nijinaya Kwanza. He has like mm-hmm. three Dennis Jr. Qualls. <laughs> it's like you call yourself DJ. It's giving basketball. <laughs> so Dio, yeah. It's like when The Rock calls himself DJ. Yeah. Because you're uh, doing the, the Dwayne Johnson. My yeah, name is DJ. Yeah, Shut the fuck up, man. You're not an actual DJ. Unless you're Shaq. Shout out to Diesel. Yes. Another man. <laughs> Shout out to Diesel. Shout out to Diesel. Shaq understands. Shaq is one of those people. Mm. I really like Shaq because he understands the whole point of being rich is to have fun. Yeah. Yeah. Like, he just, yeah, that's Snoop. Yeah. They understand like the whole point of being rich is to do stupid shit. Like life is short, man. Yeah. You made your money. What are you proving? What are you proving? Yeah. Go, go wrestle. Yeah. Check it. Go be, learn how yeah. to DJ. Learn do a new life shit, skill. Man. Go to Tibet and learn from the monks and learn Kung Fu. Donate a million dollars. You're rich. It's like John Cena. I love John Cena, but why is he still showing up in WWE? Because I they, mean, do, they don't have any stars, actually. But, they but still, it's man. Okay, they're, 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 getting yeah. they're, they're getting a few stars. They're getting a few stars, but they used to call him all the time because mm. they're like, you don't have, you've never built anybody. Mm. I, I could have a whole podcast about wrestling, yeah. but that's neither here yeah. nor there. Yeah, he's looking for the Vince McMahon. Hey, hey, okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> but here yes. comes the money. Here comes the money. Sh- Shane McMahon. Shout out to the OG. Amen, <laughs> hey, amen. Uh, but yeah, those are my recommendations. I highly advise you check them out. Definitely. Mm. For the, like, at least I'm going to Because normally when I ask somebody, what have, been, have you been listening to? They're like, mm, 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 mm. Mm. I don't, I haven't really been listening. No, we're going to party definitive answers. Yeah, man, we have to break hearts, right? Yes. There we go. In Nairobi. There we go. Shout out to Pink Hijabs. <laughs> 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 that is an inside joke for the studio audience. If you don't get it, it's not your fault. <laughs> <laughs> now, what do I want to talk about? What do I want to talk about? Oh, hold on, hold on, hold on. Oh, yeah. Uh, the, the time when you were here, um, the guys from 30% Port Sam and Afam, mm-hmm. shout out to them niggas. Shout out to Afam. Yeah. Sexy niggas. Check them out. 
<laughs> Yo, where's, where's, my, where's my fucking list hold on? Yeah, here it is, I got it. So, mm-hmm. the first thing I want to talk about, when we were here, I had talked to them about the report here, Nini. Report here, the, aud- the forensic audit that was done on camp and frisk mm-hmm. uh, on how they spent uh, royalty money. Mm-hmm. And MCSK actually refused to get audited. You know that? Yes, I saw that in the article. Yeah, MC- MCSK refused mm-hmm. to get audited. And this is like, a, it's, it's, it's on Nation Africa. You can read it. And you can, you know, go through it. So basically, millions, millions have been looted. A forensic audit has exposed the looting of tens of millions in royalties meant for local musicians, some of whom are living in squalor, as those tasked with looking after their welfare live large. It's flagrant theft. Flagrant. Yes. Flagrant. So basically, auditors mm. also uncovered how 158 million owed to artists after reviewing license fees collected by the two agencies mm. uh, against the distributed royalties for the three-year audit period. This is just three years, which is crazy. I know. It was what, 158 million? Yes. Over a three-year period. It's so insane. They should change you for 158 million, which is a lot of money. Yes, yes, yes. A lot of money. Artists who don't have any money. And you know the crazy thing is, and that's mm. just what the audit found, how much money do they hide? Mm. Because Ukifkiria, because mm. camp and Prisk, you have to get a license from them to play music. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like even Matatus have to pay. Mm. There's like a music license. Mm. If you're selling, if you're selling music, because I remember when I when movie shop used to be like the thing before the great pl- proliferation of the fuck me, that's a hard word to say. Of the <laughs> internet. proliferation. Yes, of the mm, internet. Of Netflix and soap today. Yeah. <laughs> we, we used to like go mm. and buy mm. movies. Mm. Part, part season seven, part, part A, A, part B. Evo, evo. Mm. Mm. So, okay, in a movie shop, they would never, unless they, didn't, unless they had a license from one of the CMOs, you, would, you, you could not buy Kenyan music. Mm. So how much money has passed through the CMOs' hands to the point where you're like, artists are complaining. And, and it bothers Mbaka Saizi because Calligraph and Shanga Ali put at 2,500. Imagine, Calligraph. Calligraph Jones. I mean, I don't treat the man highly, but he's a very popular artist. Yes. And he should get the money he deserves yes. because he's a popular artist. It's insulting, isn't it? Very. Because uh, I mean, Kwapa, like, I, Kwani, artist of Kenya. So imagine if Calligraph is getting 2500 how much are you getting? You, Mr. No Name. You with your little small... Bro, unalipua fuliza too. That's it. That's it. Like a fuliza, I limit ni high, bro. I jazzy. Exactly. I jazzy. I don't know if 2500 is a fuliza, Calligraph. Like, I'm sure his Fuliza is like five digits. Mm, mm. <laughs> in euros, probably. Yeah, like, for some <laughs> mingi. But the thing is now, mm. if MCSK refused to get audited, mm. how much, because MCSK is the biggest one. Yeah. So how much money yeah. have they been taking? I was seeing, I was seeing some of the, the things we're spending money on. They're getting, what, 10K for lunch allowance. Yeah. I think that's crazy. The limit, ideally, would be 2,500 according to the law. But 10K, bloody hell, that's a lot of money they're stealing. There's a, there's a part here. However, mm. the full extent of the scandal of ripping off musicians has mm. yet to be established because another CMO, the Music Copyright Society of Kenya, declined mm. to allow auditors to inspect its financial accounts. So, mm-hmm. ideally, mm. um, in any situation, thirty mm. per, like in any situation like this, thirty percent mm. of what you collect should go into like the day-to-day running of the organization, yes, the 70, and seventy percent yes. is paid out. No, yes, no? yes, yes, yes. So yes. literally. Instead, so uh, and instead, I've squandered most of the cash on lavish staff allowances and suspect procurement dealings. Leaving hey, peanuts for musicians. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So, like, camp owes in the last, like, 2020, 2022, 75 mm-hmm. million to artists. Aye. As I was in, saying, I don't know if it's, um, you can clarify, it was MCSK. They paid their pay via ITAX, 5 million. Sorry, they, they took the money from artists for 5 million, but they didn't register it into ITAX. So the mm-hmm. money was just stolen. Yeah, they're for still, sure. They're still taxing you, but you're not getting paid. So, like, I come up, a camp mm. collects money from establishments that play music, like clubs, hotels, retail shops, matatus, hotels. Yes, yes. Then it distributes the money to its members. Ah, like, this, this thing is very, there's a very, how can I put it? You, you have to go through it because it's very extensive. Mm. We'll, we'll, we'll put the link. Yeah, yeah, yeah. in the doobly-doo. Yeah, mm. you can read it. It's, it's, it's a mm. very long read mm. that you will really appreciate because mm. it shows the lot of how, what the Kenyan music mm. industry is where. Mm. Royalties are, are taken away from you, mm-hmm. and then you you have no idea how to survive. Yeah. Your music is banging, but you're not making any money. But somebody somewhere, a suit, is just pocketing it because I take a of That is such a weird thing to say, because I have seen how the industry is designed, and I have seen how, like, how much money there is. And I feel like I would really want a corporation. Like, and this is the only time I have been pro capitalism in my life. Hey. I would want an actual because CMOs are government like are like are regulated by the government. Yes, yes. I would want an actual corporation to come out and just take 
control of this situation like gava council all these licenses mm-hmm, mm-hmm. somebody somewhere serious creates some a serious like one CMO. large governing yes. body mm-hmm. and it operates to that because if you see how cmos distribute royalties yeah and you see how safaricom distributes royalties for skiza tune yes imagine skiza tune is where artists find the revenue yeah how crazy is that because if you do the math around skiza tunes you'll mm-hmm. understand there's a lot of money in a royalties. lot of money a lot a of lo- money because royalties mm-hmm. A royalty is a very small thing mm. in its individuality. Mm. It's a very small amount. But once you add it all up, it becomes an insane mm. amount. Because if you do like, let me just give you the math. Um, mm-hmm. On a royalty for, uh, okay, let me just do the math. Let's say you have Skizatun, and you can now do 50,000. So mm-hmm. you mm-hmm. use it daily. Yeah. 0.52. Uh, hold on, just let me do the math. So every day you're supposed to make 26,000. And then times three. So in a year, you're supposed to make 9.49 million. Ooh. If you had 50,000 people having a skiza tune every day. Every day. Every single day. It's supposed to make 9.49 million. That's money to live off. Th- th- that comfortably. Is, yeah. That is before mm. you, you pay taxes. Mm. Nani. But that is after Safaricom mm. have taken their cut. Mm. Imagine. That's and after Safcom takes their cut. And then... Hold on. And stealing from artists, I feel like, is is a special kind of evil. Because these are creative. These are people who love their art and they're doing actually, it it's not for you. It's, it's actually more. Because... Yeah, I, I think I, I did the math wrong. Yeah, yeah. Times. Yeah, it's actually 14 million. Yeah, it's a strong goma. Yeah, it's a strong goma, bro. Okay, but I get to know the skis that you know. Oh, oh, at it you know, you know, you know, you know, you know, you know. All those weird skis that you call someone. I think my name is David. Yeah. David it means... You, you might think this is so stupid, but when you're on the back end, that person is eating. Mm. Is eating mm. insanely. Because if you have 50,000 people, you're making what? 14 million that's a lot of money that's a lot of money lot of that money. is an that's insane money, and i understand yeah. like and i always feel like that's that unique to your shamba but mm. guess what shamba <laughs> mejaka kenya that's true shamba mejaka kenya like africa <laughs> your, your old uncle has a skiza tune and he probably got it by accident and yeah. never figured out how, how to yeah, take it off yeah. so safcom just take 1.5 yeah. from 1.5 shillings every day from his credit for that and he will yeah do it's it he, and he's fine with it he's fine, people call me yeah that's mine that's my mine. mother has a skiza tune she does yeah oh not so embarrassing Yeah but she's old <laughs> like old people are, allow, are allowed to be embarrassed yeah people, like what yeah skizatunes i wouldn't have a skizatun but i understand mm. why we're not judging skizatun yes. havers by the way mm. uh, it's a great product it's actually yes. being kenyan artist yes, instead yes, of yes. the cmos safaricom sponsors <laughs> <laughs> give us skizatun money yes so yes, put yes. us on the next skizatun panel <laughs> yes 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 but yeah like it yeah. really sucks and that that yeah. is something that threw me for a loop just reading yeah. that whole report and being like wow yeah kwani like What is the Kenyan like the Kenyan government does not care like <laughs> about many things uh, yeah but mm. as an artist if, as an artist to some report in Azalia una juliza kwani what's the point of being a msani mm. when somebody who was just given a job by their uncle mm. is going to steal all my money mm. and buy a prado mm. and then come steal my girl mm. yeah there's a there's a mm. progression here mm. you're broken heart broken <laughs> and the reason you heart broken is because waves. <laughs> somebody stole your money and bought a <laughs> and it's taking your <laughs> that's what i was saying like stealing from artists people who they 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 try their hardest to make money even mm. royalties even if if you go to streaming they get paid such little money mm. actually we can t- we can pivot to that yes yeah. like in the um the goldman sachs um recent report on music in the air about how the projection from 2022 23 expanded by 7.8 million your spotify probably is uh, a dollar more at the moment right they increase the rate, the rate really yeah okay i didn't know that you've not noticed like in on on all subscriptions it's they're adding the money if you if you subscribe if you subscribe to icloud mm-hmm. it's a dollar more if you subscribe to netflix of course you know it's a dollar more mm-hmm. and this money is not going back to the people who make the art it's just the money is never uh, we talked about this i think like two weeks ago maybe last week yeah. i'm not really sure yeah. um about how mahalia yeah. said she's never made any money from her streaming Like she's never made money from streaming 100 million streams and you never made any money and she's a big artist a very big artist yeah and this is the thing i, mm. I, I read the report and i went uh, like the breakdown and i went through it and there was something yeah. that stood out for me yeah is that super fans don't have an avenue mm. for spending the money they want to spend for artists that's true because in the era of itunes when you could actually buy a cd online sindio you could buy like the digital c- mm-hmm. the digital version mm-hmm. of song mm-hmm. when steve jobs came and yes. was like a dollar song you know super fans were spending mm. three times three times the amount a regular fan was but now it's uh, right now in the era of streaming it's actually 1.8 times mm. what the regular fan is is spending mm. so 
is it a is it a question of like super fans don't have the option? They have the money and they're willing to spend it, but they can't find an actual legitimate va- value mm-hmm. value add mm-hmm. that justifies spending this more money. Because mm-hmm. the money you could you could buy a there was like a regular version of the album, and then there was a deluxe, ah, and yes. then there was a deluxe with bonus yes, plus street TV, yes, in yes. video from Japanese tour. Yes, yes, from, from different areas. From different yes, areas, yeah. yes, with videos, you know, and that. all that. So yeah, if yeah. this was if this was nine dollars, mm-hmm. the regular mm-hmm. album was nine mm-hmm. nine ninety nine. Mm-hmm. This like, the deluxe was twelve ninety nine, mm-hmm. and then like this deluxe bonus features in it was like fifty ninety nine. Mm-hmm. So always like the super fan would, would always pay what to. I support this artist completely, yeah. and I just want to. Buy the most, like everything they can offer. And I want all the it. content. Yes, I want all the content about the artist. Yeah, that isn't yeah, available yeah. on streaming. Mm. I've noticed. I've noticed. I've noticed. And in general, it's a scam because they can take the album from you mm. easily. Easily. I mean, uh, you, you don't have actually it. own. You don't own you it. You're renting it. Yes. You are literally renting it. Like I have an Apple Music subscription, and I was an iTunes subscriber since I was 13. Mm-hmm. I put all my music in there. I have. a very large catalog of things that i collected when i was young and i know that at any moment it cannot be taken away it's not guaranteed but it's so weird because even like this is something I'm, i'm actually noticing about like video games i saw i saw a tweet the other day that says 45% of all video games are, are, are like missing are not playable anymore because once once you stop selling things on physical on physical copy mm. and you put them on storefronts you can own a game yeah and it will be delisted Like just like that they'll take it away from you just Or like that if, if it's online they'll shut down the server so yeah. the game is wa- virtually yeah. worthless yeah. you have you have the, the concept of ownership is gone it's true it's true because mm. these people can take it away at any time mm. so even in streaming like unashanga what's my favorite what's my mm. favorite album like oh they took it down from the platform i pay all this money to i appreciate the convenience yeah but yeah. i would rather spend money and have it and have it and own that's it. why kids mm. piracy isn't as bad as you think i mean We're not advocating for okay. We're not advocating for, for piracy, for but here's piracy. the thing. Here's, here's my yes. logic behind it. So yes, 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 yes. I saw somebody saying that for years. Yeah. This is about the the actors and writers strike. Mm. For years, people have been saying don't pirate stuff because you are hurting the people who are Make making who are making you the content, the shows, <laughs> but, the writers. But, but they're not making any money anyway. <laughs> and then you go back and you realize, and you yeah. realize, wait. I'm paying for this shit legally and the people who I'm supposed to be supporting aren't even seeing any money. Yeah. So what is the moral obligation for me to not pirate? That's true. That's true. That is such a crazy That's thing true. to say. That's true. But we we are living in an age where I used to love like buying things to own them is great. Mm. Paying for things to rent them and then the corporation can decide they want to take it away from mm. me is not. Mm. But anyway, I digress. I feel like streaming services should have an option like um how can I put it? Like on Twitch. Yeah. You see the way Twitch could tiered subscriptions. Oh yeah. yeah where it's yeah, like yeah, yeah. this is a certain amount. Mm-hmm. So this is what you get as a streamer. Mm-hmm. Tier mm-hmm. 1 sub is like mm-hmm. $5. Mm-hmm. And then Nani will take uh half of that money. Amazon yeah. will take half, $2.5. Yeah. Yeah. Tier 2 sub is like $10, isn't it? And Amazon will still take $3 from that. And tier 3 sub is like $30 and Amazon mm-hmm. will take 5. Amazon's cut is getting bigger. but also the cut that you are making as a creator is getting bigger it's an avenue for super fans yes, yes it's it's literally mm. it so if yeah. you're the biggest fan and you get packs you get yeah. like special badges yeah. you get so many things mm. you get really all these packs mm. on the channel you can tap on charge in giving that charity for tiktok yeah as <laughs> yeah. ice cream mm. yeah <laughs> <laughs> ice cream so yummy <laughs> 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 Ah, good for the trip to the screen. Yes. <laughs> Ice cream so yummy. Mm. Ice cream so yummy. <laughs> Career opportunities are many. <laughs> There are many by the way. And that babe makes that babe makes $7,000 a day. So let's just Crazy. 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 So anyway, Crazy. Yeah. if Spotify gave me the option to be like, "Hey, this is what you pay every month." Mm-hmm. Which is like what $3.49 mm-hmm. a month. Mm-hmm. That is what Spotify gave me. But there's also like If you, there's the option you pay for that that's for the service that's yeah, for streaming yeah, isn't it yeah. fine but there's now an option where you can actually spend more money on your account to support this particular artist to support that particular artist so you can add an extra $5 to your account and we'll charge you an extra $5 but where $5 $3.50 is going directly to the artist that makes sense it goes directly to the artist mm. and We take a small cut, mm. you have a dollar, but the rest goes. The rest like of it goes, cup, yeah, yeah, and yeah. that the rest of it goes to the artist. Yeah. So if you are sitting here yeah. and like, of course, we, we're not trying to make Drake even richer. Yeah. 
Yes, indeed. <laughs> <laughs> but there are artists we love and support. There yeah. are indie artists that really speak to us. Yeah. Guys like Okicheki their tour, even Kenyan artists. Yeah. And it's always been a, a numbers game, isn't it? If a, a random Kenyan artist, somebody who's like who has a very let's say like flyer music, isn't it? Yeah. If he got let, let's just do the math. And I we've been doing a lot of math today. We're not engineers, but anyway. Bona calculator. Isn't it? 3.5 times 140. Make it add up. 100 mm. if if 100 people just gave that mm. um four dollars a month to him send you they sorted yeah that's 49,000 49,000 mm. for anyone mm. is enough money to sort out your rent mm-hmm. you, you can you pay for rent you can mm-hmm. put some for savings mm-hmm. you can buy food mm-hmm. you don't even have to worry about booking a gig now you can live as an artist you can live as an artist, artist yeah. and not have to debase yourself for yeah, yeah. what analo talked about yeah. i would love to see that option because the artists i would give my money willingly yeah they like, are definitely you listen to something give... and you're like mm. i i want i want this person to know how much i appreciate mm. this content they've created mm. you know sitaki patreon i just want right there just right at that right moment there. yeah And But I do feel mm-hmm. like capitalism will take advantage of that. I, okay, and you'll feel like a, like a, you get half an album and they'll tell you, you know, for $5 more, we'll give you the rest. Okay, yeah. They'll cut out the content already that's, receiving. That's the thing. Yeah. Capitalism will take advantage of it, which we'll is crazy. Advantage. There's like the ethical dilemma around trusting yeah. people who work in music companies. <laughs> Don't. <laughs> Don't. So, but that's, that's such an, an interesting option to have because yeah. I would give my money to Spotify yeah. to support A, B, C, D. Should you? Yeah. It's it's less than 2k brother. Mm. It's less than Gilbis Co club. <laughs> it's less than Gilbis. It's less than Gilbis Co local. Uh-huh. <laughs> it's less than Gilbis Co local. You spend more money on stupid shit and if it's putting artists in it's putting money into your artist favorite artist pocket directly. Yeah. You should be able to do that. I think the problem comes in and this is not this is an issue. I, it, it's a bit it's a con, it's like conspiracy. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I have a feeling that if these guys started doing that uh at some level they would have to be audited that's true they would that's have to true, be actually. audited that's true that's true and then mm. they don't want people to know actually how many people on their platform mm-hmm. because mm-hmm. i feel like all these platforms are inflating their mm-hmm. user numbers mm-hmm. and they're taking advantage of the fact that we don't have that data yes. like netflix inflating you know the number of uh, viewers yeah. we don't know they don't release that information yeah, th- that is not information that is put out to the public so yeah. we don't know how many people actually use netflix yeah. all we have mm. is they're saying we have over this number of u- active users every month or something like yeah. just something like that yeah. same thing with um i feel with um netflix and the whole why do i want to pay residuals is because when you're paying residuals to these actors to these writers yeah. there is there, there is a number there's a math behind why you got that residual mm-hmm, mm-hmm. sindio and that math can lead back directly to the number of users on the platform mm-hmm, and that mm-hmm. is and that is when like always if you i feel like all these platforms are just lying to us so they can justify more vc money mm-hmm. and they can burn through it because In reality we are not as many people as we think. That's true. That's true. That's we all true. have a Netflix account, but I don't mm. think everyone in like the number of people they say have Netflix account is the mm. actual number. There are probably more people in Kenya with Skiza tunes that have Netflix, Netflix yeah, accounts. Yeah, well, <laughs> yeah that's, everybody that's is using true. somebody I love Netflix sent me the email yeah. Oh, Your account household. is oh, for the household. Oh my god. What has like, come? What has come? It's my account. I should be able to access it anywhere. What do you mean household? If I don't have a TV, what do I do? <laughs> exactly. Like, yeah, and that's the thing. Mm. And it's like the whole it's, it's It's the Amazon way of making money where you just yeah. grow infinitely. Yes. You don't have to make a profit, just grow yes. as quickly as you can. Yes. And then yes. growth d- drives up share price yes. and share price creates value for share. It's, it's bullshit. But the it's snake eating itself. Yes. Mm. Yes, 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 yes. Mm. And I just I feel like that is the reason you'll never get that option on actual mm. like platforms. streaming platforms. Mm. And super fans are left out into the dirt. Mm. So the money you could just go to iTunes and just pay. Mm. iTunes didn't need user numbers. Or iTunes survived to, on or revenue. You, or you go to a record store and, and buy, buy the vinyl. Yeah. You know, buy buy like the actual content that they're giving you. Or you know? and I and I saw part of that report is like there's also an increase in direct to direct sales mm. where there's no middleman anymore. Mm. It's mm. the artist selling directly to them. Consumer like Bandcamp Fridays. Right? Yeah, do that. Mm. Go buy directly from the consumer because yeah. I we cannot trust these. Yeah. We have yeah. Nini. We have these big monolithic platforms mm-hmm. that are controlling every stake of the industry and buying catalogs mm-hmm. but at the same time paying artists nothing mm. and we, we we at some point like the artists just give up it's like all we're doing is making drake richer exactly. drake does not need to get richer drake is rich enough enough <laughs> he's rich enough <laughs> combination <laughs> <laughs> Combination. <laughs> combination. <laughs>
<laughs> that man gets cringier and cringier <laughs> as time passes. And, and you know, now mm. the thing is, sir, mm. these um these artists, Kwanza, yeah, yeah. and one thing about streaming that I like, and it's a segue into the next part, is that you can actually find catalogs from older artists that have been you haven't listened to in a while that, that have trans, yeah mm. that have transitioned yeah. to a whole new medium or genre like going back to 50 cent there are kids who don't know 50 cent was like the biggest rapper in the world in 203 somebody who was born in 03 is 20 years now mad sindio yeah. so I mean, they, i'm 19 so i can't really <laughs> <laughs> so if you're 20 years now <laughs> You have no idea of how mm. big 50 was. Mm. You have no idea that this man was pound for pound bar for bar mm. the biggest artist in the world. Mm. So you take your second guy 50 cent you're like ah the guy who makes TV shows yeah. the actor on power. Did you can candy shop? No it's like that one. He used to be a rapper like the kids who have no idea who 50 cent was. So in posterity you can go back and check out catalogs. That's true. Which That's true. leads me to my next talking point. Mm-hmm. Nigga saying future is better than Ludacris is insane. Luda for one is a better rapper and has more classic albums. Future has more longevity but his music as time has gone and has become watered down and repetitive, which is true. Luda has been acting for almost two decades now but his music still stands the test of time. Which brings me to my to our final talking point. Mm-hmm. Do you think niggas are trapped in nostalgia? Yes, definitely, definitely. I mean, like the artists you listen to in when you were 14 to let's say 20 are the ones that stick with you the most. Mm-hmm. Like some people won't understand the the impact that Charles Gambino had in some of our lives. Mm-hmm. When we listen to 2005, just be like, oh, that guy for street, what? He's an actor. Feels like, feels like some. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've, I've, had, I've had a few of his songs, but no, nostalgia is what takes you back. It was like, ah, man, I knew this song was good a long time ago, and I'm sure it still is good now. You know, I was really thinking about that tweet, and mm. I couldn't agree that Ludacris was better than Future. Because Future Pia, like... They, they both they both had their highest highs yeah but i feel like future's highest high is better than luda's highest high really i, I feel like Fu- luda is a better rapper like technically yeah yeah i mean that was what was marketable at the time yeah but i still feel like future has made better song do you think luda chris has made a better song than codin crazy i don't know man i'm not too big of a fan of either of the artists. I, I do I do indulge in their content mm-hmm. and I mean it's ludicrous. You have to know ludicrous. It's mm-hmm. like it's like a must. But I do feel like it goes back to the nostalgia that you had that when this song was banging, it was banging for you and you enjoyed it and you will consume it for the rest of your life. That's why this person can say that um this album's rate better than um Future's current uh, catalog. It's because you listen to it then at the time when it was impactful to you. You yeah, that point point. You know, Valid that's point. That's why it sticks. That's why it sticks. So, like, in my mind, I'm like, I'm, I'm thinking about like Luda's discography. There's mm. like Chicken and Beer, Southern Hospitality, Theater of the Mind, all those records. Yeah, yeah. And then you think about Future's, um, Future's discography, and you're like, there's some, there's some, there's some nini apo, like some duds. Quite, I feel like Future has the higher highs, but also has the lower lows. Because if you really think about it, well, let me look it up. Mm. Because Luda has some really has some really good album. Theater of the Mind is Nini is quite underrated in mm-hmm. my opinion. Mm-hmm. It had like this is from like 2008 I think or 2007. Had this song called I Do It for Hip Hop. Oh yeah, Word of Mouth, Red Light District. Mm-hmm. His last album came out in 2015. That's a long time ago. I think his Jeez. last album that actually had a hit was Battle of the Sexes. This is that had like i think a, 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 a babe on each feature man's is getting fast and furious money yeah, you can't yeah. blame him <laughs> you can't really blame him by can't the way can't blame him can't blame so, him so but i feel like that's the nature of an artist you have your peaks and you have your lows i mean kanye made graduation and he also made jesus is king yeah you know that, yeah <laughs> there'll be good times and there'll be bad times people will forget you eventually but uh, yeah that's the whole mm. point of me saying just we're trapped some people are tra- trapped in a nostalgia bubble yeah. not because the music is good but they attach the goodness of the music to how they felt about it exactly how it exactly. made them feel at that exactly. time exactly so if somebody has to tell you that this artist is better than that artist you're not arguing from a point of logic yeah, it's you're never arguing from a point yeah you're yeah. arguing from a point of emotion yeah cuz so, yeah like if i think no. about it does does luda have a better as hey wait now i'm looking through the discography i'm like mm. that is right too mm. Mm, 56 nights 56 nights Ooh. monster mm. there are some um e, uh, not evil what is this called hendrix mm. when he put out like mask off is a mm. banger mm. and i feel like since yeah uh high of life pays is a banger that's true that's true there's some really good 
I never liked you. I wasn't really that good. I, yeah, I, I like, it, it, it had some you. songs. It it uh, it uh, fell through the Drake effect. My album is too long, and you're uh-huh. looking for streaming revenue. Yeah, <laughs> and uh, you'll have some good songs, but you have to look for them. And I hate that. Uh, and I th- make I th- albums twelve songs again, please. Yes, please. yes, <laughs> please. Vanyanika Bruno Mars, thirty six minutes. Yeah, we're That's done. It. We're, we're done. done. What else? What more do you have to tell me? We're good. We're fine. Hey, we're not going to album 21 songs. Come on, little baby. I don't have one hour and 15. One hour, one and a half hours to give you. Like, Nyeshimu, please. I understand sometimes, like, Mark DeMarco recently released an album that had, what, what was it 100 plus songs? But these were just demos. Like, he was just removing his back catalog. But if you intentionally market an album and bring it to the public, and it's 30 songs long, like you, Chris Brown, what, what is that? <laughs> <laughs> what is that? <laughs> And th- that's uh, the point where only super fans will listen. Yeah. You, you're pushing yeah. away regular people. Yeah. Yeah, let's make albums that long. But we are, we need to be objective when we discuss music in Dogo Pia because the, the looking glass of nostalgia has made us appreciate things that weren't as good as they used to be. That's true. I used to love Blue Swing Park by Mark Miller. Blue Slide Park. Yeah, Blue Slide Park. Yes. Sorry. And I went back to it and it's, it's, it didn't age well. Yeah, that's <laughs> the thing. It didn't age well, but and, I still and love in it. In the moment, I remember <laughs> when, the, when Blue Slide Park came out, yeah, some yeah. reviews were like, this is not a good album. Yeah. But because you support this artist completely, yeah. you go back and you say, yeah. no, it can't be. Like, you, you guys are just hating. Me, I'll tell you, like, I love Finally Rich, mm. but it's not the best album. It's not, it's not the mm, best album I've really ever had. Isn't, really and if you tell me it's not good, mm. I'll be like, I get why you're saying that. I attach value to this album yeah. based on how it made me feel, yeah. not on its quality. Mm. So if somebody says Future is better than Ludacris, there's an argument to be had. It, you are an, and this is a very old head thing. You tell old heads, oh, Mazi, this artist wasn't as good as you thought. Mm. What you mean he wasn't mm. as good? You know, it's you kids now mm. who listen to this mumble yeah. rap. Check yeah. it. It's like um, um, Tyler, the creator, was in an interview the other day mm-hmm. and he was talking about how when people name their top five rappers, no one wants to hear, oh, Tupac, oh, Notorious Big, oh, Wu-Tang. Want to hear what impacted you personally. Yeah. If your top five, if, if, you're, if in your top five rappers is, I don't know, Manny Baguio, then yes. that's interesting. That's interesting. That's like, very, we can work with yeah. that, you know. Like, we already know that Tupac is great. We already know that B.I.G. is great. You know, you, what I, you know what I hate? Uh, and this is why I don't like boom bap motherfuckers. Because anytime you talk to them about ranking rappers, yeah. and you don't put in like these, like Tupac or yeah. like, Big, they're always like, that top five is invalid because it must have. No, it, it doesn't. Like no one booked a position. It's it my opinion. <laughs> yeah, I understand B.I.G. Yeah. only had two albums before he died. Yeah. And they were really good, both really yeah. good albums. Yeah. And Tupac made some really, like Me Against the World, yeah. Machiavelli, The Seven Day yes, Theory, All Eyes yes, On Me. Those are yes. all great albums. He's a great artist, but... That's we already know that. We already know that. We already know that. Can you own a range? Exactly. Own a range. Exactly. I'll do such a good artist. Yeah. I wanna. I want someone thing. say like in my top five is I don't know NBA young boy. I'll be like interesting. I don't rate him highly, but I want to know why, why you, you rate, rate him highly. Him? In like when in your life did this song impact you that much? You know the crazy thing when I tell people mm. my favorite album, they always like why is that your favorite album? What the, is your favorite album? The Yellow Album by Dom Kennedy. I've not listened to it, no. Don yeah. Kennedy is that era of... Um, oh, future, and this is 2000, future around the this blog, is 2012, the blog yes. Ah, okay, this okay, is 2012, okay. the soundtrack uh, of the summer. My uh, favorite album of all time. Uh, and people are like, is it stylistically better than um, some things you've had? No. Who okay. cares? <laughs> is, is, is he a better rapper? Are there themes he explores? Gag. No. <laughs> no, he doesn't. I just, it's just my favorite. It's just, mm. it's just what makes me happiest yeah, to listen to. And then yeah. I tell them that's my favorite. And my second favorite album is like Love Deluxe by Shade. Mm-hmm. And then it's always like... Sour. Okay, we understand Love Deluxe. Mm-hmm. Like, mm-hmm. there's all that good percussion mm-hmm. work, the vocals and any. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, we get... No, Jackie, you, ha- you don't have to like things. You don't have to explain why you like things. Yeah, music is a just, very subjective experience. Yeah, you just have to like it, except you don't have to like Nashinsky. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Sour. That shout is the, out. <laughs> no. Retract your statement. Take it. Shout out what? Sour. Ay. Me, I'll shout out Hitler before I shout out Nashinsky. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll fix that in post. No, no, you won't. So I stand on that. Ten toes down, okay? Ten toes down. I stand. Those are my words. Yeah. Quote me, bitch. But like you said, yeah, like you like what you like because it hit you at that moment in time, mm-hmm. and it will reson- it will resonate with you throughout your life. Like I love the Beatles. I love the Beatles a lot. I was not there to experience them at the time, mm-hmm. but when I was thirteen years old and I listened to Abbey Road. Man, I was hooked. I was hooked. That was my shit. I don't have to explain to to people why I love the Beatles. I mean, it's obvious, but it's my shit. It's personal. 
it's, it's, it's like liking white people music. And I, I, I love white people music. I love the Doors, but there, there are bands that came after them that were that were stylistically way better, more uh, explorative. You've gone, you're contradicting yourself. What do you mean stylistically way better? You enjoy the Doors. Yeah, right? that's it doesn't the thing. matter. Here's the thing. Mm-hmm. I enjoy them despite the fact that I know they are better artists and better albums. Mm. Music, it's very objective. It's very hard to be objective in such a subjective space. And that's, that's what I'm that's, that's what I'm get, I'm that's understanding true. now because that's true. This person who says Ludacris is better than Future, maybe I have no dog in this fight. So I, I can I can be objective in my analysis of this like yeah, I I feel like there's a case to be made as on who is better. Yeah. You can look at discographies, impact, yeah. you know, longevity. Yeah. You can argue it down. You can do it. You can always argue it down. Yeah. But for the person who's on the other end making that argument, there's yeah. already an emotional investment yeah. that I do not have yeah. that clouds yeah. their, their their ability to think objectively here. Like Chris Brown has fans. I don't understand how Chris Brown has fans. But mm-hmm. he has fans. You know, they're not all delusional. No? They hey. must like him for a reason. But the, <laughs> you know? let me tell you something I realized. Mm. A lot of Chris Brown fans are buddies. <laughs> you buddies, paintings, mm. fine girls. Listen to Chris Brown. Laugh with, literally, that is your in. That is your in. <laughs> Did you like pills and any pills and automobiles? I'm, yeah. not, I'm not that desperate. <laughs> Checky. The, the desperation scales. The desperation scale depends on how bad the body is. <laughs> so it's a graph. It's like it's directly proportional. Uh-huh. <laughs> Your desperation is always directly proportional to how bad the body is. So I tell you, I just the Arkali uh, uh, remix. Utasema, hey, you know what? Yeah, sure. Let's jam. Jackie. It's a freaking weekend, baby. We can have... <laughs> exactly. No, I mean, you're putting me in a hard corner, by the way. There you go. You're putting me in a hard corner. <laughs> Sometimes hey. I have to draw a line and say no. I like you, but I don't like you like that. <laughs> Checky, you can let her kill you. Hey, talk you out of... Hey, Checky. <laughs> I have standards. <laughs> you can't be me, sir. Got to see it through, my boy. Sour. But we are going to stream it off a pirated site. I don't want him to get any of my money. So we might listen to the song, but we're not have, allowing him to eat uh, off our money. Sour. That, that's 0.0001. 0. Yeah, that's 0. 0. 0.01. Turn it to BD.com. <laughs> to BD.mobi. What's up? <laughs> What's up? Warp trick. Warp trick. <laughs> no, download Goma Warp trick. No fucking way. Am I allowing you to tell <laughs> 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 That's been so much fun. Anyway, I feel like we're out of time for today's episode. Thank you so much, guys, for vibing with us. This has been episode 36. Again, please send your get well soon wishes to Suki, who by the time this is coming out should be, inshallah, at home, I feel better. Amen, amen. So, yeah, um, that's it. And if you're going to take away one thing from this episode, it's like if you listen to Chris Brown, you'll get buddies. Mm-hmm. If you're desperate enough. Yes. yes. In fact, if you're desperate enough, you can listen to anybody and get buddies. Every That's subculture true. has a buddy. You just That's need to true. look hard enough to That's find true. one. Women so, attractive. Even goths are buddies. <laughs> <laughs> find me at uh, at Haitas Karaoke on Twitter. Mm-hmm. And if you see me on the streets, holla. holla. Exactly. I'm taller in person. Wink. If you see me on the street, please ignore me. Probably <laughs> <laughs> Thank you guys for vibing with us. We'll see you on the next one. <laughs>